This is always the time of the season where the National League action really hots up. At the top of the table, Haven, Hounslow and Southgate seem to take it in turns to head the pack. But at the bottom end, it's pretty fierce as well. And our game today brings together Welton against Slough in a game that means so much to both sides. Desperate for points, today's game is sure to be a tight and fierce affair. Let's see how the sides line up, starting with today's home team, Slough. Playing in the traditional 2-3-5 formation with Richard Lee Elms in goal, Mark Kirkland and David Phillips at fullback. In the halfback line, Chris Willis, Simon Cox and Kenny Partington. And up front, five men, Simon Organ, Gavin Bambury, Colin Banton, Chris Maskery and Julian Laxon. A lot of responsibility on their skipper, Mark Kirkland, to see them through this game in a difficult run-in. Let's hear from Mark about today's game. Uh, today's a difficult game for us. Um, both sides are struggling at the moment. We were both down at the bottom end of the table. Um, and so we both need the points badly. Um, I feel that we, we, we've been very inconsistent this year. And we've put on some very good performances. But then we've let ourselves down. And we've played uh, some very bad games. I and mean, hopefully today we can, we can put that right. Predictions, well, I'll go for a 2-0 victory. Slough's opponents today, Welton, named Peter Clark in goal, David Bailey, the experienced David Bailey at sweeper. Across the back, David Dewhurst, Ian Blackburn and Stephen Moat. Midfield, international Andy Humphrey, David Main and Alastair England. And a three-man forward line, Paul Sheardown, Manprit Kochar and Paul Borman. Like Kirkland, Paul Sheardown feels a heavy responsibility to steer his team away from danger in tough circumstances. It's going to be a, a tough game for us today. We've got several tough games over the next few weeks. We've, had, we've played all the top sides now, and uh, we've got some real battles coming up. Slough is the, one of the first of these real battles. They also need the points, and uh, both, both sides have got to fight really hard for a win today. I think uh, it's going to be very difficult, but we could probably, we should snatch a win today, probably by the odd goal, 2-1, 3-2, something like that. The umpires today are Alan Budd and Jeff Riley, the technical delegates Bauer Singh and Dil Bara. And welcome back then to the University of Birmingham where Slough playing in the sky blue tops with maroon shorts are about to get this crucial Peter Express National League game underway. Their opponents today from the northeast of England, Welton Hockey Club. We've had an absolutely critical game for both sides. The start of this game. Both sides lying just outside the two relegation spots, immediately above Canterbury and Bromley. The win today for either side would put some daylight between them and those struggling up the foot. Joining me in the commentary box today, I'm delighted to say we've got the coach of Cannock and Wales, Malcolm Wood. Malcolm, whose Cannock side has already played both of these sides in the league already this season. Malcolm, welcome. Thanks very much, Nick. Yeah, I think uh, you're quite right. You're going to see a very tense sort of game today, and already uh, Welton are showing that they're going to sit back in a half pitch and look as though they're going to just try to hit Slough on the break. It's going to make it very congested, very difficult for Slough to play. Lovely aerial over the top there for the Welton skipper, Paul Shear down on that right wing. The marking will be particularly tight. Partington experienced veteran now, Ken Partington, left half for Slough. He'll be picking up the Welton skipper. And although most of the attention in the media has been on what has happened at the top of the Pizza Express Premier Division, believe me, this game matters to both sides today. So important, Malcolm, to, to stay in that top flight. Yeah, it certainly is. It costs a lot of money to uh, run a National League team. I think at Canuck we're estimating it's about 10,000 a year. And we have our own pitches, so we don't have pitch hire to take into account. So when you're investing that sort of money, you definitely want to stay there. Fine break on there. Lovely ball. Picking out Julian Laxon for Slough, but I think offside. So important for Welton as well. The only remaining team from the north of England in the Pizza Express Premier. So important for that division that Welton hang in there. Some good young players coming through. We have to look out for Manpreet Kochar, who's playing the number 13 shirt centre forward today. Excellent young prospect. Slough, who used to be very much the almost unbeatable team in English hockey, but things have changed a bit over the years with retirements and the occasional disaffection of players moving away. 
just as Rip used to rely very much on the stalwart Paul Barber. No Barber anymore in the stat in Slough Colours. His role has been taken on very much by their skipper Mark Kirkland, number five today at right fullback. Kirkland, who was brought up alongside Paul Barber and learnt so much from the talented and experienced international player, now has great responsibility in the Slough team. Now, coach chart, no. It's a free hit given in favour there. It was actually Andy Humphrey who was trying to make his way through into the slow circle. And slow break. Yes, you mentioned Mark Kirkland there, Nick. He's uh, a player that I rate very highly. Somebody we sort of pay attention to you know, when we play against him. Good break on here. Going towards the Welton circle. That's a great little take at the last minute, isn't it? Very important. Good defence there from Welton. Defending in some numbers. Yes, interesting contrast here, Nick. You see um, Welton playing half pitch and very strict man for man. Whereas the Slough boys are sort of, well, they're picking up, I think, at about three quarter pitch. But they're playing very much a zonal uh, type of defence until they get into their 25. Simon Cox. Good skills from him. Kirkland's found some space on this right hand side. Here's Kirkland. Cox has continued his run, this is him. And for Kirkland again. Right start from Slough. And fine take there by Moat. One of the great characters of the game, Steve Jinner Moat. Apple salesman up on, on the side. Yes, he's quite often up on a Saturday anyway, at three o'clock in the morning, Nick, so, uh, dealing on the market, and uh, then has to turn out and play on Saturday afternoon. But as you say, quite a character. Another one is Pete Clark in goal. You hear a lot, of, lot from him today. I'm sure we will. He caught up with Welton earlier in the season when Clark had an outstanding game. Yeah, he's a good keeper. He loves to come to Canuck where he has this uh, wonderful sort of wit and repartee going on with what we call our pig pen and the Canuck supporters. <laughs> yes, I was actually up at Canuck for that game this year and I can uh, echo everything you said. Now, opportunity for Slough. Good take again by Moat. Now Andy Humphrey, England international Humphrey, a key player for Welton. Now Shear down. Partington quickly in. Ball's broken, but three hits have been given. The umpire's day, Jeff Riley and Alan Budd. Riley on the far side, Budd on this side. And they'll be keyed up for this game as well. So much can change. So much importance on umpiring decisions. And they'll know how much this game means to both sides today. Now Kirkland scanning, looking for movement ahead. And Clark quickly out, and that was important. Clark and Moat, they're almost get, getting in each other's way, but the ball was cleared. Yes, a good little run through by Colin Bant and then almost set the, set the guy up on the left for the shot. Welcome, we've spoken a lot about the importance of this game, but for Wales too, this is an important year. What have you got coming up? Yeah, we've got uh, European qualifying championships coming up, Nick. We're playing in Gibraltar um, against Portugal, uh, Gibraltar, Denmark, Scotland and Italy. I'll just break off there. Side of play. Um, and what we've got to do there is get into the top two in that tournament to actually get into the European Championships in Dublin uh, later on. And I find it quite interesting what you hear in the media these days about um, money being paid to professional sportsmen. Uh, these Welsh guys, in fact, to play for their country, have to pay, they have to contribute. They have to contribute 30% of all sort of training, uh, accommodation and travel expenses. So if there's somebody out there who wants to support the Welsh by putting some money in, we'd be very grateful. Good break there from Muskery. Wins a long corner. Realistically, can Wales qualify? Oh, yeah, we should do. We're, seed, we're, we're top seed in that tournament. Um, and the bugbears will inevitably be the Scots. Protected by Moat. Not too bad to play. Yes, yeah, the other teams we should walk over. But that's only in theory, of course. <laughs> Great tackle again, Baxter. No shortage of commitment out there today. And uh, 
think that will uh, bring tears to his eyes. <laughs> Keeps his eyes in a funny place, no? <laughs> He's OK. He's a pretty tough cookie, Stephen Moat. Yes, thank you, Bob. Perfectly all right. Thank you for the inquiry. And away we go. Pitch in there, but not enough length on that one. Easily taken by Kirkland. Knocked away from him. Yeah, the coach will be pleased with that. Uh, they're going to try to pin that ball in the left-hand side by denying uh, the pass from left half to the centre, uh, hoping to make him hit long, or as you saw there, chuck an aerial and then win it back and counter. And here we go. That's a lovely ball through. And Clark took a chance there, going with his stick. The whistle have gone. There he is. Peter Clark. There they go, trying to make him hit long into the zone. And, put it and picked pressure. it up again. So, a good tactic being employed by Slough. And welcome, we've got some problems here, getting the ball away. And that's one way of doing it, taking the free hit quickly. Sheer down, picks it up. Now on for Alistair England, and the through ball looking for Coach R, not a good one. If you're quite right there, Nick, if you comment about getting it going quickly, you can actually get the ball turned over before the, uh, the zone is set. It does make things a lot easier. Oh, Simon Cox again. They look a world drill team, Slough. Kirkland. It's a lovely ball forward for England. Uh, Sheardham's on the right hand side, but they can't get the ball to him. Musgrave knocks it inside. Uh, Bambury forward. Uh, for Simon Organ. And that ball harmlessly over the baseline. What do you think will be going through the Welton coach's mind, Peter Nicholson, at the moment? Welcome. Well, I think he'll be quite happy in the sense that they haven't given away a corner and they haven't given away a goal. Um, they've had one or two useful little breaks. I think he realises it's going to be a bit of a war of attrition. And um, I, think, I think secretly he'll be happy if he comes away from this game with a point. Just to set the scene for you once again, Welton on eight points going into this game. Slough on 11. Welton have a game in hand, but that matters very little unless you're winning your games consistently. And in fact, Welton haven't been picking up points since their last visit here to the university when they drew one all with Bourneville. moment the two sides at the bottom are Bromley and Canterbury the two Kent sides it's not looking good for those two at the moment now Organ again Oakland's got it heavy challenges going in England was the last one the free hit's been given taken quickly by Slough Cox It's a lovely ball. Nice skills there from Simon Cox. England. To Humphrey. Humphrey out on that far side now for his Kippers shear down. That's the area I think the goals are going to come from if they do for Welton. Uh, Andy Humphrey, England 21 player, ex England 21 player. Paul shear down with a lot of pace. But there's everybody in the league with the speed. <laughs> Clark to the edge of the area, kicks clear. The goalkeeper for Welton really earning his place in the side again today. Two or three very important interceptions from him. Yes, he's a big lad, Clarkey. Puts himself about a bit. Yeah, second widest in the first division, I reckon. <laughs> After Alan Wesley, I think. Oh, you've got him in one. <laughs> and this is a danger now for Welton, though. Pull back. And a great flick. And it's there. Scored by Simon Organ. A great goal. Welton were at sixes and sevens. And when it came back for Organ, Organ gave the big man in the Welton goal, Peter Clark, no chance at all. So, Slough get their noses in front. 
So there's just six minutes to go before the half-time break. And Malcolm, that could make a lot of difference the way Welsh can come out in the second half. Well, yeah, they might well have to come out and uh, go at Swell. Uh, I know Peter won't be Peter Nicholson won't be pleased about having to play in that style, but uh, they desperately need points. Now Maine. So that goal really coming somewhat against the run of play. Welton had begun to impose themselves on Slough a bit. Slough had kept their shape, kept their discipline. They put some pressure on that Welton circle. So Morgan's high flick separates the teams at the moment. Scored on the half hour. Yes, he took that very well. He took a lot of power, picked his spot. So the pressure mounts on welcome. Hold it, fans, hold it! So much difference since hockey went over to three points for a win. A draw really would suit neither side today. Well, I'm sure just at the moment, Peter Nicholson on that Welton bench might be dreaming of a goal that ties it up. Malcolm, your own team have been the draw specialist and it's cost you dear this year. It has. Uh, we think we'd be in about fourth position if uh, two points for a win and one for a draw, Nick. But uh, a lot of that's down to ourselves. Lacks of lapses and lapses in concentration. Uh, against this Welton side, we're 3-1 up and coasting with 20, 20 minutes to go and they, uh, well, we let them in it, really. Well, main forward for Humphrey. It's a good turn. He's into the circle. Can he win something here? Um, but he's got a stroke. Andy Humphrey went past Partington. Partington complaining there to Jeff Riley, but the stroke's been given. And an excellent opportunity now for Welton to tie it up. Malcolm, how did you see that? Differently to Partington, yeah. by the of things. Well, I think, um, I think Andy Humphrey would be very grateful for that. Well, Jeff Riley was right on the spot. Yeah, we could have been closer. We couldn't really see clearly from here. It looked as though he had his stick taken as he went into the circle. The umpire's got to decide. So it's Stephen Moat against Richard Lee Elms from seven yards for one each. And in it goes. Moat kept his calm. And he'll have enjoyed that one. Yes. So all square again. And a great repost there from Welton from the penalty spot. Interesting to see whether Slough can keep their concentration and disciplines now. Yeah, it's happened again, Nick, hasn't it? Uh, you score a goal, elated with the fact that you've gone ahead, concentration goes, and in the space of a couple of minutes, they got one back. I was going to say that the decision for the umpire there uh, is, was it a deliberate foul, or was it a foul that would stop a certain goal from being scored? So the umpire had to make his mind up, Presumably, in that situation, with the goalkeeper in goal, he decided that there was a deliberate foul by uh, by Kenny Partington. Just to reiterate, he could not have been in a better position. He was right on the spot. Yeah, right in front of him. But the anger and frustration was clear for all to see with a prolonged, sustained protest there from Slough, which continued even after the taking of the stroke. Lee Elms had come out of his goal to discuss the matter further. But it matters not now, it'll be in the, in the papers tomorrow morning as Walton come forward again. Now Humphrey in, Sheardown's got it. And knocked away. Once again, Paul could have gone forwards there into the circle. Instead, he tries to pick it up with his back to the circle. Didn't know that he was in the, in the clear. And since this is an important moment of the game now for Welton, Slough have lost a lot of their composure after that penalty award. Welton could press heavy advantage now. They could still take a half-time lead away with them. And they were into the last few seconds. I've seen that one given as a penalty corner this year. It's about two and a half minutes remaining in this first period. Malcolm, how do you as a coach tackle adversity when something like that has gone against you on the field? How do you turn that around at half-time? I think you try to get the guys to, to focus on what they should be doing. And 
you bring back memories to uh, remind them of situations where they've been they've been down and they've actually come back for, from those situations. I think ultimately it's, a, it's an experience thing. You try you try to plan for that in your preparation. You try to plan it for you try to plan to get the players mentally to be able to help to cope with those sorts of things. Because they're very much part of the game, happen all the time, don't they? Yeah, indeed. Mental toughness is a very important aspect of, well, not just hockey, but all team games, all, all sports, in fact. Bailey crushes it out on that far side for sheer down. Washington there was there quickly. Now Cox for Slough. Gets it forward. This is Colin Banton. Now back with Cox, and the free hit goes to Slough. Partington. And the through ball there is a misguided one. 16 yard hit out to Welton. There's Manpreet Coachart, all smiles. Bitterly cold day out there today, Coachart wearing a shirt underneath his normal playing shirt. Really is very, very cold here in Birmingham. Coach has got it again. Sheer down down the right hand side. Here he is. Haven't really seen Sheer down at full pace. He's not being marked by one of the game's faster players. And the whistle's gone. And who's in trouble? I think it's Maskery. Must have been something he said. And it's a green card for Chris Maskery. He'd do well to put away that frustration. I think Kenneth Partington might dispute it with you there, Nick. At his pace. About his pace. Yeah. Well, as long as he doesn't challenge me to a race, Mel, I'm <laughs> quite, uh, quite content. Lane turning away from trouble and then laying a terrible pass there to his teammate, Ian Blackburn. Not a good pass at all. Cox. A good game for Slough in the first half. Cox spread the ball around nicely. Now Kirkland. England is dispossessed. Maskery. Hogan, the goal scorer for Slough. Again, the free hit goes to Slough, rolling on the pressure now, trying to get something before the interval. It's a lovely ball in for Maskery, and the whistle's gone, and the hoot has gone as well. Brings us to half-time, the score's tied up at one each. Everything to play for in the second half. Join us after the interval. And welcome back then, where Welton playing in the yellow shirts, going from left to right, are about to get the second half underway of this Pizza Express Premier Division game. If you're with us before the interval, you'll know it's all square, one goal each. Slough took the lead on the half hour, goal scored by Simon Organ. An excellent fleck in after a promising break down the left hand side. Just before the interval, it was tied up from the penalty spot in controversial circumstances when Stephen Moat met it from a seven yard spot. So, everything to play for in the second half, and just to reiterate, to bore you, so much at stake, and the game's first corner in the first minute of the second half. Joining me in the commentary box today is the coach of Cannock and Wales, Malcolm Wood. Malcolm, I know you enjoyed the first half. What do you think the various coaches have been saying at half-time? Um, well, I think uh, Peter Nickerson. Well, shall we just wait for this corner? Let's, to, let's to do done. just that. Let's do just that. Important moment. First corner of the match. Humphrey strike, and it's deflected in, and That's it's in. Deflection. Boats. What a goal. My goodness, he's going to remember that one for a very long time. And I dare say, Malkin will be talking about it in the bar. I was going to say, if that isn't the champagne moment, I should be very surprised. Well, did he mean it? Of course he meant it. Have you ever spoken to Stephen Moody? He means everything. <laughs> I certainly have. My goodness, that was a great goal. And what a start to the second half for Welton. Now, Slower, just a little bit rugged after the concession of that penalty towards the end of the first half. And a terrible body blow to them there. First corner of the game, shot came in from Humphrey, and Moat was on the end of it. Quite a lofted shot in. Yeah. Now, sheer down. Oh, good skills from sheer down. Skinning Partington. Partington's got back. 
the defence all round there from Slough. Three hit has gone in favour of Welton. Everything going their way at the moment. There's Shear down. Well read there by Kirk. An important job now for the Slough skipper to get his team lifted, thinking positively about this game, and of course back into the game as well. They trail now by two goals to one. Sorry, Malcolm, we cut you off in full flight, just yeah, as well I we think, did. Yes, I think, uh, I think Peter Nicholson would be very pleased, apart from giving that goal away when they just went to sleep for a couple of seconds, he'd be generally pleased that his tactics uh, have paid off. No penalty corners conceded. Uh, apart from the, the goal, I don't think uh, Slough had a shot on goal. I think he'd have liked to get one or two more corners. I've been very pleased with the way the corners have been going. Um, well, we've seen the proof of that just. Uh, Shear down, trying to find a way to the circle. Three hit given against Maskery there. Slough got to dig deep now. More problems here. Borman trying to find a way through. Play goes on, and he scores! Slough absolutely furious, looking for an obstruction off the ball. Lee Elms is coming 40 yards out of his goal to protest to Amparlandwood. Waved away, but the goal counts. And Slough have got to be very careful. Malcolm, how did you see that one? Yeah, I couldn't see what the appeal was for, but there seemed to be some terribly slight marking to allow the young lad to, to pick the ball up and run laterally with it for ooh, five or six yards, then get his feet around and put it in open step. Very poor concentration defender. Now, whether that was because something had happened beforehand or not and they'd switched off, I don't know. Well, from my angle, there seemed to be quite a, a clear third-party obstruction which gave right. Borman the opportunity in just a yard and a half of space. Obviously wasn't how umpire Bud saw it. But Slough once again feeling very hard done by and how this game has turned round in the space of less than 10 minutes. Slough got the first goal. Now just three minutes into the second half. They trail by three goals to one. And what a different game this has become. And the umpires, Malcolm, going to have to be very much on their guard to keep all 11 players on the pitch here, I think. Yeah, now really bub bubbling. Tempers are getting a little bit hard. Now Partington down this left-hand side. should reiterate this is a very very difficult game to umpire hockey very technical game so much happening at great speed the umpires of course do not have the advantage of the action replays all they get is one take and they have to blow it as they see it but at the moment Slough have got a mountain to climb yes I think you'll see the Welton just trying to kill the game off now uh, stay in their half pitch They've got the two goals to try to keep play a lot of possession hockey. And if there's any any problems at all for them, you'll just see them whacking it off the other end of the pitch and telling Slough to come and try to break them down all over again. Well, it'd be interesting to see whether they do do that. I have to say, Malcolm, that Welton have looked a better side since they went 1 0 down and started coming out and playing a bit. You're quite right. I hope they don't try and shut it up because I think Slough could well teach them a lesson. Uh, Moat, score of two goals. His second goal right at the start of the second half. Really put Welton back in the driving seat. Now, uh, Sheer down on the right-hand side. In a little bit of space. It's closed down now by the Slough defender. very important against these half-pitch defences that you keep your front players up the pitch as close to the 25 as you can. They start coming back into midfield. They crowd the space that the midfield players have. That's been very difficult to play in midfield there. have to be very disciplined. Well, that's a good reverse off. stick. Yeah. Lovely layoff there. I think there's uh, more problems for for Welton here. Alistair England, is it going to be shown a card? 
He is indeed the green card for that push just outside the slow, uh, just outside the Welton, rather, 25. Hardly been close to the line. Had that infringement taken place a foot further forward, Slow would surely be taking a short corner now. Yes, you're quite right. Man. And that was pretty desperate defending there by, or attacking there by Organ, just taking his eye off the ball. And somehow Slow got to get the composure back. Now Cox losing out. Borman, score of Welton's third goal. But in fairness to Welton, they've rode their luck, they've taken the decisions that have gone in their favour, but they've scored some good goals as well. The second goal from that early corner, no, will take a lot of beating. Now, Organ for Slough. My goodness, how Slough need a goal now. Yes, they mustn't get carried away, though, Nick. You get them back one at a time. You can't get them both back in the space in a couple of minutes. Just keep playing, keep doing the things that uh, you know you do well. Keep Cox. the patience. Rolls it to Partington. Partington flips it forward. Maskery with a steal. And Maskery and Humphrey there tackling. And this game still is on a knife edge at the moment. Kemper's afraid, the frustration's building. They think it's tough at the top, Malcolm. It's doubly tough at the bottom. It certainly is. But it's those sort of situations, Nick, where you really see the true character of players coming out when your backs are against the wall. What's the old saying? When the going gets tough, the tough get going. Absolutely right. Must be there, cracking it out on the right-hand side. And towards the circle, says again, just a free hit to Slough. Cox takes it quickly, a good ball too. Organ drives it in, and that wasn't too far away. It's a hit in to Slough. The deflection just taking it away there from Banton. Yes, that's a good cross in. Again, down the defenders, reversed it side. Got the deflection, could have gone anywhere that one. Mastery drives it in. Long corner. Partington. Mastery. Good take. Clearance not completed. So I've still got it. All 22, 21 of the 22 players, anyway, in the Welton half now. Measure of the task ahead of Slough if they're going to get back in the game. It's a good spell of pressure from Slough. This is where they need to just get one back. You've got to convert your pressure into goals. Borman. Moat. Or for young coach up. It's Oregon. Now, Maskery, first touch let him down a little. Into the circle, knocked away there. Important the challenge tackle. there from Blackburn. And Blackburn, a hockey development officer in the northeast of England. And he will know more than most the importance of Wilson staying in this National League First Division. So much work and, and development has been done up in the northeast over the years. This really is the flagship of North East Hockey. Now, a lovely ball in for Organ. Across the circle, Humphrey did well, took it calmly. International quality touch there from Humphrey, part of the defence. This now's hit. Organ drives it in, off moat, long corner. I think Welton are getting a bit anxious now with this pressure not able to get the ball clear and then keep possession. Well, they've just got Coach R outside of their own 25-yard area at the moment, so it's... Oh, and that was a chance for Slough. Just not going their way at the moment. Very hard to see, Malcolm, how Welton can clear the ball and retain possession if they're only going to commit one player up front. Well, really it's... saying to Slough, OK, you attack and we'll trust in our defence for the next 20 minutes. 
Clear down, hit the deck well. They're getting half a touch on it. Kirkland had to come round and tidy up. And now Chris Willis. Willis for Slough. Infield for Cox. Now for Logan. there went in hell for leather but was easily undone and a lovely ball there for Sheardown into the circle he could tie it up here goalkeeper's committed and oh just wide of the post and it's a good chance for Welton but easily been four yeah, I think early shot was necessary from Paul Sheardown there uh, gone around the goalkeeper quick shot I know it's a narrowish angle but uh, it allowed everybody to get back it made it very difficult well, we've seen goals go in the season Malcolm from narrow angles and that certainly but uh, down there didn't quite have the courage of his convictions having taken on the goalkeeper successfully to really make him pay with a killing shot fourth goal for welcome there would surely kill off Slough goal difference could also be important at come the end of the season who knows it's very very tight down there that's sensible play. Nothing on, so just keep the ball. We're in front, boys. You've got to come and take it from now us. Now Humphrey putting pressure on that slough circle. Bring it against Willis, just on the edge of the slough circle. Both teams will need to be five yards. Coach Hart, and that was a good snapshot there. Good routine, Malcolm. Yeah, we've, we've used that ourselves. Um, the guy who's passed the ball tends to be the, the, the fella who... Um, teams worry least about and as you saw there nobody came to close him down giving him straight back and he's got a shot it's as well that Lee Elms was tuned in for that one because the shot was on target and it's broken kindly again for Welton Dewhurst solid tackle there and as Welton have ridden that uh, five seven minutes of pressure haven't they and uh, they've come back well playing well at the moment phase of the game for Welton having got this two goal cushion of a lead now they need to keep Slough quiet a break on here though for Slough played forward for Organ but he can't pick it up all play down his weak side well, they really have played to their strengths on the yep. right hand side and again, poor Shadow, nothing, nothing fancy, just keep the ball. If I can't keep the ball, I'll get a free hit. Maybe we can sit down on that Walton bench at the moment and win today would really lighten their load for the rest of the season quite considerably. Humphrey's shot took a deflection, it'll be a long corner. Important interception as well there, put in by Charlesworth. Yeah, that was a brave, brave interception to have to go down and head on the line, literally, there, Nick. Charles with again in more orthodox fashion, but can't get it away. Lovely ball, Humphrey with a little space. And again, the interception from Charles with, but a corner. And Walton are really starting to believe it's their game now, I think, Malcolm. Yes, they don't have to do very much. I just want to be interested to see how many people they have up on this corner. Normally they're seven up and three back on the halfway line, which makes it six. Six against three. Now they're st sticking with their routine. There's the push out. Humphrey shots. Well blocked. Still not clear. And Partington scrambles it away. Two minutes to go. Now Phillips. Cox. Nice skills by Cox, but they've got to get the ball forward. Here's the Kirkland. Speed of pass again. So slow. Kirkland had to really wait for that ball. Three points. It's going to be then for Welton. That will give them 11 points from 13 games. Level on points now with Slough. And four ahead of Canterbury. And seven 
ahead of Bromley, who I'm afraid looked doomed. Musgrave competitive to the last, won that one well. And again, a terrible ball, but given back there by Welton. Free hit to Slough. We're into the last minute. Slough going forward now. More in hope than expectation. Musgrave. Willis. And Willis uh, pushing the ball past the defender, looking for an obstruction, but really had no chance of picking that ball up at all. So three well-earned points for Welton. Malcolm, I should think Peter Dickinson's going to be pretty pleased with that. Yes, yes Pete, both of them. Paul Peter's. Dickinson, rather. Paul Dickinson, Peter Nicholson. Yep, I'd be delighted. And so I think they came for a point and they're going away with three. So they've created chances and they're executed them well. I know it's going to worry Slough because so much depends on other teams. And the final hooter sounds. Welton indeed have won this vitally important Pizza Express Premier Division game by three goals to one. It keeps both of them in with a sporting chance of retaining their.